There really is no formal ordination process for an imam. In some of the American mosques, for example, uh, it's the practice to rotate who leads the prayers from one week to another. Um, we have different imams that come. Dr. Emov is like, I think this year he's like our imam, like, like the person that we can really go to to consult him for anything, advice, whatever. My PhD, which I received back in 1975, was in astrophysics. And uh, I worked as a, I was a working scientist for many years up until the late 1980s. Um, and at that time I switched fields uh, because I was dismayed at the lack of understanding of Islam that was shown by the so-called experts of Islam. And when I was in third grade, they handed out two sets of cards. If you're a Protestant, you were to take a green card, and if you're Catholic, you were to take an orange card. Well, of course, I couldn't take either card, and so the teacher said, well, what is your religion? And I didn't even know the name of our religion. I said, I, I don't know. I said, a Syrian, I think. And she said, no, that can't be right. She said, ask your parents. So I went home and I said to my mother, what's our religion? And she said, we're Muslims. And I said, what's that? And she gave me a copy of the Yusuf Ali translation of the Quran. And she said, it's all in here. Read it. If you have any questions, ask me. Uh, I also spent a lot of time at, uh, for my think tank, the Minaret of Freedom Institute, doing research work on policy recommendations regarding good governance, interfaith relations, uh, countering the distortions about Islam. Well, what makes the uh, Minaret of Freedom Institute unique is we're the only one that is dealing specifically with the relationship of Islam and liberty. Actually, there aren't that many think tanks that deal with Islam in particular. That in itself makes us one of a few. Uh, when you're involved in doing think tank work, you want to try to make a rigorous proof of whatever it is you're saying that will withstand the most serious critical questioning. When you're preaching, you simply speak about what is right and wrong as you understand it, and you try to motivate people to adopt it and to act on it. You'll find if you've discussed this often enough, you're going to run across people who are going to say, oh, no, 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 you know, on the Day of Judgment, God will give Muhammad special permission to intervene for his people. And the Quran doesn't really say anything that I think could be interpreted that way. I'm only reminded of what a Turkish friend once said to me, uh, you never lose by investing in young people. In fact, there's a hadith of the prophet, peace be upon him, in which he said, you are all imams. Every man is an imam to his family, and every woman is an imam to her children. <laughs> Thank you.